On today's show, we are going to show you some old-fashioned recipes for holiday baking. Stay tuned. Fitterer. And I'm Laverne Didi. On today's show, we got some holiday cookies. Yes. And some of these recipes are probably even older than you. Well, I don't know if they could be that old, <laughs> but they are. They've been around for a while. Okay. <laughs> yes. What are we going to make today? Well, these are some old family favorites. Um, we're going to make some honey cookies. We're going to make uh, the pinwheel cookies that has the date filling in it, and then we're also gonna make some pecan tassies. All right. So we're gonna start here, uh, we're gonna start with the pecan tassies. And uh, start here, it uh, asks for a cup of flour. The dough is really easy to, to make up because it's just a cup of flour and three ounces of cream cheese and a stick of margarine or butter. Okay. And I'll still say, I always use butter. It always is better. And with the cream cheese, I definitely recommend using the regular cream cheese. Do not use the light or the fat free. Okay. Because with the, it makes a lot of difference in the crust. It's not as flaky and it's, you know, it, it's a little firmer crust or, or and that. So definitely use your uh, uh, regular cream cheese. Okay. That. I learned that once by using you know the the fat free and I couldn't understand well why my uh, crust wasn't as flaky and as good as it used to, you know it ha always has been so and it was later just visiting with somebody and they says oh did you use the fat free or whatever and I, and I had oh, okay you know thinking but you know the few calories that you're gonna cut by trying to use fat free when you have all the other ingredients, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Well, we try not to count calories during the holidays. Right, anyway. yeah. They're it's, the holidays for a reason. Yeah. It's like having a great big cheeseburger and having a Diet Coke. You know, I don't think it saves that much calories, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. well, I like Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do too, but you know, yeah. it, it's just a comparison. And you just take that and mix it. It's really easy. It mixes quickly. And because we're going to shape them into little balls to pre press into our little uh, tart pans, I use my hand. It's so much easier to mix and that. So. And this makes about a couple, two dozen small tarts. Um, I know that this is, like you said, a family favorite. You can easily double, oh. triple, quadruple this recipe um, without any problems. Very much so. Very easy to do that. And make sure your butter and your cream cheese is like at room temperature and then it, your dough will just be nice and soft and it'll be easier to mix, so. And you, you've done it with your hands. Um, you don't really have to use a utensil. I mean, it's just no. easy just to dig in there too. That's, that's right. So now what we're going to do is we're just gonna take, make a little ball and I make it, a, you know, about that size. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a utensil that, you know, well, it's I had about a little a quarter, scoop. Yeah, and quarter that, and size just, and diameter. you know, I make them all and just put them in there and, and then I'll press the dough in there. And because um, like three ounces of cream cheese, you know, your uh, cream cheese comes in usually eight ounces. So it's so easy to double this, this recipe and that so. And I just press that in there and shape them and uh, I had purchased one time a little uh, wooden dowel or whatever to to push it was supposed to make yep. you know that I don't like that doesn't work very well <laughs> you still use so, your fingers for yes. everything yeah nothing like your hand so I'm gonna let you just go ahead and continue with that and you just take that and just uh, shape them in there mm, like that and I do bring the dough up just a little bit on the side so that you know I can get a little more filling in there without it running over on me. Sure. I did preheat the oven to 325 okay. because the, these bake at 325 for about 25 minutes. So then while these are baking we can start 
with uh, one of our other cookies. I know this is one of Dad's favorites. It always has been. It goes over. If you like pecan pie or pecan yeah. pie, however you say it. Mm -hmm. um, this is a nice little dessert. It is. And, you know, it's, it's just a nice little, uh, you know, they're small. Of course, you usually can't just eat one, but it's not like eating a, a full piece of pie. Right. And that's so... And like I said, this is called pecan tassies. And, you know, I've done already where, you know, if I haven't gotten my pecans on sale, because pecans are really expensive, um, and I've used walnuts, and you can really almost not tell much difference if you use the walnuts to the pecans. Oh. Or even just mix them together, and uh, it'll just be a little bit cheaper. I just need a little bit of dough in here. Push that down on the bottom. That one I a little skimpier on. That was probably one of mine. Oh. <laughs> no. Remember, I eat. <laughs> I don't oh. cook it all the time. <laughs> and and things like that. So and it's very easy. You know, we're gonna mix up the the batter that you put in, and that's very simple too. So all right. look at that. And in fact, I'll probably well, I'll have you all can press these down and you can start on the filling. Okay. Um, there's a tablespoon of butter in it and I want it to soften that a little bit more. Okay. And that. So. Okay. And I can use this same bowl. It, so you, you don't have to make a lot of extra dishes dirty, but we're going to put one egg in here. Okay. And I, I like, you know, that tablespoon of butter, you know, melt it because when you're, you're whipping this here and you don't want your butter um, hard because um, it's not going to mix very well for you. So just beat that egg a little bit there. And then we use uh, three fourths cup brown sugar. Okay. Got to be smarter than the container to open this here, <laughs> and that. And then it's got a teaspoon of uh, uh, vanilla. And right now I just have the powdered vanilla, and that works just fine. So I put that in there. And it says just a pinch of salt. So I'll just put a little pinch in there and then I will just mix this really well. So it doesn't, it, it's your brown sugar and your egg and that and that tablespoon of butter is all the liquid that you have. Yeah, I can see where, you know, using light cream cheese in the, in the crust really wouldn't make that much yeah. difference. <laughs> Okay, and then I've got um, two-thirds cup uh, chopped pecans here. Okay. And so just blend that. You know, and I've made the mistake of um, using uh, my beater, my electric mixer, and beating it, and it gets real, almost too light and fluffy, and it seems to kind of... Uh, run over a little bit more than if you just use like a, a whisk and uh, you, you know, just basically whip it need to mix it you don't need to whip it right that's right yes so I need to get a teaspoon here and we will just fill those there I'm not quite as fast as you are <laughs> well I might have had one or two a little bit more experience just a little just a little <laughs> yeah that, I don't know. You weren't in the kitchen an awful lot when we were baking. What happened? Well, I sure was a tester, taste tester no. for you. I, was, I thought that was a pretty important job. Yep. You do like your sweets, though, too. <laughs> <laughs> and so just, you know, a teaspoonful. You want to make them, um, you don't want to have it way full to the top because they do, it will rise a little bit and, and you don't want that to run over. So 
so it doesn't take very long with that. And is this something you know? We are using the small tart pans. Do you have you ever or could, do you think it would work to even make a bigger one? Maybe not the size of a muffin, but that would probably be way too sweet. Well, you know, I've never tried it. There's no reason that you couldn't, you know, if you didn't have that. But the idea is just to have it small and just a little bit of a treat, you know, like yeah. that. So, so we're going to put it in the oven for uh, th at 325 for 25 minutes. And put the timer on there. Okay, the next thing we're going to feature is our pinwheel cookies. Okay. Okay, we've got the tarts in the oven, so now we're going to start with our pinwheel cookies. Okay. Uh, one thing I did do was I started the filling. And I'll just come over here to the stove because you need to cook this and you want it to cool and I wanted to make, you know, make sure that it had time to cool because we're going to make the dough and we can make it right away so we don't have time for the filling to cool. What I use is uh, two pa boxes of chopped dates okay. and that equals a pound. So even if you had like 12 to 16 ounces that will be, be fine if you didn't have you know the full pound there okay. and then it takes a half a cup of sugar, a half a cup of nuts, and three-fourths cup water. And what you do is you just cook that so that your filling is nice and smooth. You know, the, the dates have all cooked in. And so it's going to be really easy to spread on your dough. Okay. And that, and like I said, you need to have it cool. So, um, and it, I just put it on a low heat and stir it occasionally. And it doesn't really take that long to actually cook it up. What would you say, about 10 minutes that you probably did? Yeah, or? 10, 15 minutes at the most. Okay. You know, and that. So uh, it you don't want to have the burner on too high because you can scorch that okay. and stuff too. So I'm going to just set that back over here for a moment, and we'll get started with our dough. It uh, asks for th three eggs. And it says a cup of mar uh, shortening, I, and, and because my recipe is really old, way back, it was shortening or, you know. <laughs> the, lard. Yes, lard. <laughs> it wasn't used as, you know, you didn't have your butter and your margarine like that so much. So, uh, like I said, my old recipe says shortening, but we, we're just going to go ahead and use butter. Okay. And it says a cup of butter or shortening, and so well, that will be two sticks of butter there. Now are these recipes that you got from grandma or is this something that came from dad's side? Well this is the pinwheel cookies is a recipe that my mother made. Okay. And that so that was a treat for us and, and you know it's a cookie you could make other times versus just the holidays but there's just something that you know special if you just make it for holiday and, and you really look forward so it's nice just to you know wait for it mm -hmm. at that time so we're going to put that here in my blender I just want to beat that up a little bit and then it asks for two cups brown sugar and we'll just blend that well and add the other ingredients so let me get that mixed here a little bit okay now we're going to add our two cups of brown sugar and we'll just want to you know cream that for a couple of minutes so it's nice and you know mixed well and creamed before we add our flour. Okay. Okay. Our eggs and uh, butter and brown sugar have creamed nicely. Uh, you know when I add it creamed you can already see that it's got a lighter color mm -hmm. and the longer you cream it you know the lighter it's going to get. So it asks for four cups of flour and it says a teaspoon of soda. So I'm going to put just add that into my flour, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay. And the other one is a half teaspoon salt. So we'll just add that into the flour mixture and uh, I'll start adding that into the dough. So you just don't There's, put it all in right away, you gradually add no. this. It, it's easier to do that, you know, because especially with a mixer like this, if you add the flour all at once, it's going to go poof and you're going to be, 
You're going to look like you're the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would look like you were working hard anyway. <laughs> well, I, I, I try. So we're going to just add a little bit of that, about half of it, and then I'm going to start creaming that and then add the rest of the flour. One thing you need to, and I will start it on low so it doesn't, the flour doesn't fly up. Your um, flour, it says four cups of flour, and sometimes you might have to adjust that just a little bit because sometimes if you have larger eggs than another, you know, you might have a little bit more liquid. So you might need to add that maybe a half a cup of flour or something because this dough we're going to actually roll out and okay. stuff so so it's a thicker dough right you want to have it so you can uh, work with it you know because you're going to actually roll it out and it does seem like when you're putting that all in there it looks pretty stiff and, and it will be you know in that but so it's a little f firmer than what a normal cookie dough would be when you're uh, putting it on individually in a cookie sheet it's not a dough that you'd want to mix by hand it would be hard, yeah. I tell you this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you could eat at least one more cookie, right? Sure. <laughs> That's if you can stop at one more. Okay. And I do have a shield for this mixer, you know, that, you know, with the flour so it doesn't fly all over, but. You know, I really forget that I have it and very seldom use it, but it is a nice feature to have. Yep. And it doesn't take much to mix. You, you're not needing to uh, really beat it for a long time or a certain length of time, just so that, you know, your flour is all mixed in there. I want to get, mix that up a little bit from the bottom and there because it is got some extra flour there and get that so this was actually even four cups of flour and it's going to be just about right here the dough okay. I won't have to add additional on this okay so we're going to take that off there It is very thick dough. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's firm. And that, but like I said, we're going and we're gonna take out some um, we're gonna put roll it on wax paper. Okay. Because this needs to um, uh, refrigerate, you know, overnight or you know, it actually can stay in the refrigerator several days if you know you can't don't have time to bake it you know, the next day. And that's what's kind of nice with uh, some of this, like this cookie dough and the honey cookies, the batter that we're going to mix up. You can mix it um, night before and bake it the next day or whatever. It, it's a time-saving feature because sometimes, you know, just till you get everything mixed, um, it takes, to, you know, good good half a day or several hours to get all that baking done. And it's nice to have it this done and you have all your dishes washed up and, you know, it's not so much to um, make your cookies then the next day. So what, what's the, the purpose of having it refrigerate for so long, like you said, overnight? Um, what does it set up during that time? What's the, the theory behind it? Uh, with this dough here, you... Uh, when you've got it rolled and you've got your um, dough all rolled up in a pin pinwheels, it's going to cut nicer. I mean, if you did it right away and the dough is soft, it's not you're going to not get nice even slices. Uh, your dough won't be as good, so it just works better uh, okay. with that. So, okay, I need to get some wax paper here, and I'm going to take out two sheets because we want to evenly divide that dough. Okay. So I'm going to just actually just put it out on 
one here for now so I can get that script. But actually, too, what I need to do is I'm going to flower the wax paper just a little bit so that, you know, uh, when we roll it, it's going to uh, not stick to the wax paper. Okay. Let's scrape that all out of there. And again, you'll be using your hands just to work with that dough there. So let's just sprinkle the wax paper with a little bit of flour. And that looks like about half there. Sure. And I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to um, add a little flour here too. All right. Okay. So just take your dough and kind of shape it. Um, you're going to want to make it a little, I mean, long because you're going to roll it out to uh, get the flat. And you're going to have it about the width of your uh, wax paper. And you might find that you're going to just sprinkle a little bit of flour on top so you can work with that a little bit easier. And I'm going to just lift that up and add a little bit more to the bottom. You know, so it won't stick when we roll it up. I don't know what I'm doing here, Mom. <laughs> well, it looks like you're doing just fine. <laughs> you're going to roll it about um, maybe a quarter inch thick and stuff, so. Let's just spread this around a little I'll bit get more. Get that ready for you to roll. Yeah, that looks good. So the, the, this is a cookie that it's the prep time again. That is is the most consuming part, and then yep. cut and bake. Yeah, and you know when I make these cookies, um, and I usually with my honey cookies, uh, these cookie, the pinwheel cookies, and. Uh, like um, there's another favorite that we have is we say Pephanies, but I know it's pronounced differently for, you know, some people mm -hmm. uh, because it does take quite a bit of time to mix that all up. I will mix it up in one day or evening and then the next day or after work, you know, I can bake it because if I had to mix it all up at, and then bake right away, I'd probably be up till one o'clock. Yep. But it, well, I think you've done that a couple of times too. <laughs> that, I, that I have. <laughs> okay, so. And even if the, you know your, uh, your edges get a little thinner, just work that dough uh, right up against there to make, make it a nice, you know, pretty much square shape there. So. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have you move that one over there and we'll roll this one out. Okay Rhonda, our timer went off for our pecan tassies here and let's see how those turned out. Oh, okay, those did turn out quite nicely there. Oh yes. So let's just uh, put them on our cooling rack here just for a little bit and while that's cooling so that we can take them out. Let's just finish up our pinwheel cookies. Sure. Okay. So like I said, I've already got the batter, or, or the filling I should say. We're going to put that on there and just divide that evenly. I need a spatula here. Alright. And there's been time, now this here is, you know, uh, really cool. Um, I've had it where, you know, as long as, you know, if it's been lukewarm, that's fine. It didn't have to be completely cold. In Is fact, it something if you got done with it on the stove top, you can put it in the fridge to cool it off faster? Um, or even if, I mean, obviously yeah. we're doing it at this in winter yeah. time, you can even put it out on the 
you could set it or you could set it outside garage. yes but you know if if you get your uh, filling a little bit uh, too thick or it doesn't want to spread nice and evenly for you uh, add just a little bit more water okay. to it but uh, this here looks like it should work well so that let's just kind of see I think we've maybe we'll just add a little bit over here and that and then just take that and you'll have to spread it carefully so you don't tear your dough you know I'm gonna oh, are you just putting my, it in the middle or are you just you're spreading it around the whole cookie you do it the whole uh, all over the dough because when you're rolling it up you want you know the filling throughout the whole cookie. Okay. And I I like using a spatula. It's actually spreads a little bit easier than a spoon does. I mean we're working with that. I'll make a baker out of you yet, Rhonda. I don't know. You're gonna live forever. <laughs> well, I don't know. Sometimes we think we will, but that doesn't all, that doesn't happen. Yeah, I'll be the one. Yeah, I'm going to bake today, and I'll burn down the house. <laughs> well, I hope not. And let's you know, you try to get it to the edge, uh, on the outer edge, so that because when that uh, filling is there, you want that uh, piece of cookie, you know, to have some filling there too. It's not so important to have it on this, on the long way that, you know, right to the edge, but otherwise we do want that. Okay. Okay, I think that, how you doing? All right. Okay. Some of the okay. middle part's gonna be a little bit yeah. thicker. And that, so just roll that over a little bit and then all you do is just take that and flip it over and you've got you know a roll here ready so yeah, I wanna put that there and then then just take your wax paper and just keep it there and we're just gonna put that in a roll like that okay you probably should finish this oh okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can um, fix it we can fix it <laughs> <laughs> oh well, like I said, we will tr try to make a baker out of you All you have to yet. say is that's Rhonda's cookies. <laughs> Everybody will know. <laughs> I, I don't think that that will make a difference. <laughs> yeah. So let's like so just roll that in there, and then I just take a cookie sheet and put it on a cookie sheet and put it in the fridge. And I've also. Uh, Say if I wanted to bake it the same day I made them, and just only you know want a couple hours, I put them in the freezer too, oh, and okay. then that works great. So, so we're gonna just take that and set it in the fridge. Okay. Now, I did make um, or mix up a batch uh, the other day, so we already have one that's ready to go. Okay. And that, so we're gonna just spray our cookie sheet just lightly here and then we'll now cut did you those. have this quick frozen or does it was this just in the fridge I I actually did freeze it but I had it had been it's been in the fridge for a couple hours though too okay. so so I need a knife you know and you and your end piece will always, you know not be you know as perfect as the others but it, it'll still taste the same so cut them about maybe three eighths inch to a fourth inch thick okay and you can put them fairly close on your um, cookie sheet because they uh, don't spread a lot so okay and there so we'll get those cut in there and then you do heat your preheat your oven at 375. And how long do these cookies take? Um, about 12 to, you know, 
I would start about 10 minutes, you know, and then double check them and stuff because it's going to vary on ovens again. But 10 to 12 minutes is usually what they take. Okay. And the, lo the longer you bake them, you know, of course, they're going to be a little crisper cookie. But if you like to have them stay soft, that's, you know, I would start at the 10 minutes. Okay. So you can see how nicely they cut. And like I say, if you didn't refrigerate your dough, you, you would not be able to get a nice even cut like that. And, you know, with the filling in there, it would really mush it together. So be too soft, like yes. you said earlier. And I usually get um, at least three dozen out of this, if not almost four dozen okay. cookies like of this. And we'll just make some there on the side there. Be too long to put them three crossed. There okay. we go. And the rest I'm going we will put back in the fridge so that you know it stays cold. Okay. So it will cut nice. So we're gonna put that into the oven. Okay. And, and like I said, I'll start that at 10 minutes. Okay, let's check our pecan tassies here. Oh, okay, that's fairly cool to the touch. And they usually remove quite easily. Okay. You know, in there, so let's just take those out. Okay, we're going to start on our honey cookies. Okay. Uh, it starts with five eggs. So let's just check those so eggs. This makes a pretty large batch of cookies to yes. begin with, starting out with five eggs. It, it does. Uh, it, it takes five cups of flour. Okay. So that's, you know, a fair sized uh, recipe. And I guess I've not ever really counted how many dozen you're going to get out of that, but I would say at least uh, five, six dozen okay. in that. Depends upon how big you're going to make your cookies too, because these we do roll out and we bake. And these don't take very long to bake at all. It takes only like five minutes to bake. Okay. You know, so that goes pretty quickly. And these you don't have to refrigerate at all. These are just, I mean, you could roll out and bake. Nope, these oh, we okay. do fr refrigerate, so. Yeah, this one says to refrigerate overnight or longer to whatever you may have. So we put in five eggs, and now we're going to put in a cup of sugar and a cup of honey. Oh, okay, that's and the that, part. That's right. Did you know that honey is your only natural uh, food that will never, ever spoil? That's why it's so good. That's right. Even if it, uh, it sets up and gets sugary or whatever, you know, you can just uh, warm it. They say you shouldn't heat it in a microwave to, uh, because it loses some of its natural, you know, enzymes and stuff or that. So just to put it in maybe warm water and, and uh, melt it like that. Uh, this here takes um, probably a good five, ten minutes to beat. The longer you beat it, the fluffier it's going to get. So we're okay. going to start with that. Okay, our beeper is going off for our cookies here, our pinwheels. Let's see how they look. Okay, hey, they brown just real nicely. And like I said, that was for me for 10 minutes at 375. Okay. So we're going to take those out and put them on the, you know, cooling rack here. Okay. And that, and so you can see how nicely they come out. You know, they're shaped very nice, uh, and you know, just look very pleasing and stuff. But they even taste better. Just need to warm up some coffee to go with those. Yes. And then we've beaten our honey cookies, the eggs, and the sugar and the honey, so we sh we'll be able to continue. Uh, mixing that up. Okay. Well, they sure do smell good. Yep. Yeah. 
and so they're just brown just about right you know so they will stay you know soft but they'll you know um, I l like them a little bit browned uh, they taste a little bit better and stuff they have a crispy crunch there so okay let's come on back over here and we had beaten our eggs honey and uh, sugar here and I, I beat it for about five minutes in and the color already has gotten pretty light you know so it does look light there so we're going to add our five cups of flour and it does then we add three teaspoons of soda also there's not a lot into this batter um, to me the the cookie in itself is kind of bland it's the frosting that really makes that cookie okay or whatever so I'm going to add the soda there so we can blend that and for a cup of sugar to five cups of flour then you know you don't have any brown sugar or anything else sweet in there right and you're just adding soda you're not adding salt you're not adding any other uh, spice like cinnamon or anything like that so mm -hmm. and that so let's just, you know, I'm pretty comfortable that I'm going to need that full five cups of flour there. And we'll just get that beaten there. And again, just mix it until the flour is all blended in there. Don't need to beat that any length of time. And again, when you know you're, you want that dough fairly stiff, so actually when I'm touching it it's not you know sticky to my finger because we're going to be rolling these out okay okay let me just quick check here now to the bottom I notice it's a little bit uh, kind of moisture I mean from the egg and that I think I'm going to add just about a half a cup more of flour okay because that's going to be too sticky you know when I roll it out so I need to get about a half a cup of flour the more you beat your eggs is that a possibility that you know you you do have to add that extra half cup or is uh, it you just kind of test it you just kind of gauge it right it's not anything to do with the length of time you beat it because actually like they say the longer you beat the eggs honey and, and uh, uh, sugar the better the lighter the cookie is okay so yeah that looks just great so we can take that off here and we can that to the side and I'm going to just go ahead and put this in the fridge okay. and we can go ahead I already had mixed up a, a recipe of this here too so um, we can go ahead and show you about baking them right away and how easy that is all right so let's just take that and put that in the fridge and there is a red bowl in there with uh, the already the mixed up batter from that has refrigerated overnight okay so we took this batter out of the fridge and you know it's stiff and it's easy to work with it's not too tacky but before we roll out uh, this here we're going to start our frosting okay. because the frosting has to simmer about 10 minutes so we're going to add 3 fourths cup sugar and 3 fourths cup water okay. Is this something that you have, we have to like stir constantly? No, no, you, we do not. I just, as soon as I get that, uh, you know, the sugar dissolves in there and then one packet of uh, unflavored gelatin. Okay. So we add that in there and just stir that up and I'm gonna put this on the back burner here and I'm gonna just put that down uh, on, on medium. And once it starts, boiling then I do turn it down a little bit because it, it's supposed to just simmer for about 10 minutes okay. I'll just get that next and this recipe here um, I even though I mean a lot of times I will make twice the double the even the honey cookies I never double the frosting recipe 
Okay. It just doesn't seem to, you know, turn out as well for whatever reason. And that, so I'm going to tell you if you need more frosting or you want to double your cookie recipe, uh, don't double your frosting. Make two batches. Okay. So, Good. Okay. Tip. Well, that's there. We're going to just roll out one of those cookies here. For that. So like I said, it's pretty stiff, but that's what you want. It's going to be easy to work with. And you're going to roll out the dough about, um, you know, about three, about a fourth inch thick again and okay. stuff. So, so we'll just work that there and I'll just put a little flour. And this is where, you know, you can use um, any cookie cutter that you would like, you know. Uh, I don't like to use... Um, cookie cutter that has a lot of design in it because it seems to stick in there and it doesn't come out real easily like a sugar cookie will. Okay. So you don't make too many different designs with this? You know, I, I don't. Uh, like I said, you can make, you know, designs that you want, but just don't use a cookie cutter that has a lot of, you know, like a Santa Claus would have okay. a lot of uh, designs in there. So, see that rolls out really easy. I'm going to just put my cookie sheet over here. And I've got a couple of different cookie cutters. I mean this is just going to give it a, a little bit of a design to that. And put that on there. And this one here you're going to bake at uh, 325 and it's going to take about uh, five minutes. Okay, you know. so a really quick cookie yes, bake. Yes, it, it does. So you can see that comes out nice. And on this side here I do have a, you know, well it's a little bit more than a star. It doesn't have, it's got more points to it. But again, just something to may have some different uh, shapes. And you can put quite a few of these on a cookie sheet. Yeah. They don't um, spread out too much then? They don't. No, they don't. You can. So it doesn't take too much. All right, got one more to put on there and then we can pop that in the oven. And you know, while I'm baking a pan, I just kind of, you know, I, I put some more on a cookie sheet, another one, so, because with five minutes, I don't double my cookie sheet in the, in the oven, so. Okay, goes really fast. Yes, so we can put that in there and we'll just set that timer for that five minutes and Let's see, our frosting, or I should say our water, sugar, and gelatin is just about ready to um, simmer here. So we're going to want to keep track, you know, of 10 minutes on here because I got the timer set uh, for, the, uh, for my cookies. So we'll just add another five minutes onto that. Okay. Um, we, we're not going to start counting five, uh, you know, 10 minutes before it starts to simmer. But the buzzer went off for our cookies here. And yep, they are done. Just a little golden brown. Uh, you know, with those, uh, you can even, you know, have them maybe not quite as brown, but this is this is still really good. Okay. And that, I think, when we started it, I says I needed to put the oven on at 325. The oven is at 375 for five minutes. For the honey cookies, 375, but for the, uh, was it the contassies were 325. That's correct. Okay. So while those are cooling, we're going to finish up our frosting. Okay. And uh, that's almost that's almost been 10 minutes already. So I got that turned down here because you can see that it's boiling there. We're going to put um, three fourths cup powdered sugar into our mixer. Okay. And then all we need to do is pour our. Uh, this mixture, the liquid into that and, and beat it. Okay, I think I'm going to turn that off and that's about ready to go. So we're going to just add that to our, OK, 
Okay, powdered sugar here. Okay. And then we're gonna wanna beat that until it's nice and fluffy. All right. So what we're going to do now is add 3 fourths teaspoon baking powder. Okay. This is not soda, it's powder. And now we're going to beat it again until it gets stiff. Okay. And that, so. And that will take, it shouldn't take very long, maybe three, four minutes, if that. Okay, let's check that frosting. I think that's getting... Um, yeah, that's getting stiff here. So the last thing we're going to do is add a teaspoon of anise flavoring. Okay. And we'll just beat that just till that's mixed and then we can frost them cookies. You know, your anise flavoring is your licorice, uh, you know, a licorice mm -hmm. flavoring. So, if you like uh, licorice flavoring, you're gonna love this. Have you ever experimented with different flavorings, or is it something you could do with this recipe? Well, I've never uh, ex tried something different. It's just because we do like this flavoring so well, and that's pretty much what uh, makes that cookie. Okay. So just frost that and then I always like to add just a few sprinkles on it. Decorate it up. Yep. So that's your job. I can talk and decorate, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you're a multitasker. <laughs> sure. And I do get pretty generous with the frosting. Because I think uh, that does add, you know, really that's the flavoring of that cookie. So because I do, you know, I am pretty generous with putting my frosting on, per, most often I'll end up uh, making two frosting recipes to one cookie recipe. Okay. So there we go. And again, you had said, you know, you, you can double the cookie recipe, but tr you don't double the frosting recipe. Yes, that's correct. So now we'll just bring over our other cookies here that we have on a tray and we'll add those honey cookies. And this frosting um, doesn't take very long to set, it'll dry, it won't be sticky. So you can, uh, you know, put your cookies in a Tupperware or a tin, whatever you're storing it in, and they will not stick together. Because this, with that gelatin in there, that's what makes the frosting uh, you know, set and it won't okay. be sticky. So, all right. You know, it's a little bit sticky right now yet, but we'll still add that oh, here. Pile them on. Yeah. So here we go with our cookies for the holidays. Sounds wonderful. And and again, nothing hard. Sometimes just a little bit of time consuming. Make the yes. dough, refrigerate it, come back the next day. That's come back right. Another day. Bake them. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what makes it great. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing us these recipes, Mom. Um, to get these recipes, just go to Consolidated's website, www.ctctel.com. Please submit your recipes for us to cook for you on the show. We'd like to thank the workshop as our sponsor, and thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you.